Okay, going to talk about pressure control now. So open my menu on the 980 and I can do pressure control in uh, sys control or SIMV, either one. Notice if I try a spontaneous, it goes away because pressure control is for mandatory breaths. So it'd be all the breaths in assist control and the mandatory breaths in SIMV. So we're gonna go ahead and hit that. And you notice our menu options change for what we can set. I'm just gonna roll this up to something a little more reasonable. Okay. So, the way pressure control works is it delivers the breath until it hits the preset pressure. In this case, pressure of 15. Now, this is not pressure cycled. Remember, cycle is what turns a breath off and allows exhalation to begin. This is pressure control, not pressure cycled. Pressure cycled would be like <clears throat> the old Bird Mark 7 IPPB machine, if you remember that. Uh, that's pressure cycled. It hits the pressure, it turns off. In pressure control though, it is not pressure cycled, it is time cycled. And that's a really important point for using it to our advantage. So, let's talk about the breath again. We have the flow goes in. We don't control the flow at all. It's predetermined by the manufacturer. But flow goes in until the pressure is met, and then it holds that pressure for the preset eye time. Changing the eye time in pressure control does not change the flow. It just changes how long the breath is held until it uh, is allowed to go into exhalation. So it is pressure limited, time cycled. Now we can use that to our advantage in several ways. When the flow goes in, it goes to the 15 in this case. And let's talk about a leaky system because sometimes our patients have leaky cuffs, uh, leaky chest tubes, you know, different, different things like that. This is a great mode for leaks in the system, which is why uh, one reason why we use this on kids you know, that don't have cuff traits. It's great for leaky systems because it's going to deliver that flow into the patient. And if there's a leak, you know, pressure is going to dip down and this, the flow is going to kick back in to top that back off again because it wants to maintain that pressure for the whole preset eye time. So that's one advantage, leaky systems. Remember that because pressure control isn't just when you want to limit the pressure. It can be for when uh, you, you don't have a, a, an intact, secure, closed system. All right, let's talk about pressure control in limiting pressures. Obviously, that is an advantage. Uh, in pressure control, pressure is set, volume is variable depending on the amount of pressure that's set and the patient's compliance and resistance. Okay, so, so far we have it good for leaky systems, for lung protective strategy if you want to limit the pressure, and then our next advantage to pressure control is oxygenation. So if we want to oxygenate a patient, there's two ways we can do it. We can either put more oxygen molecules into the patient, thus the FiO2, or we can hold pressure to the ones that are in there. Anytime we pressurize the lung, we're gonna have oxygenation. Not to mention the fact that if you hold pressure in the lungs, you're gonna get alveolar recruitment, which is also another advantage to pressure control. So, this test lung doesn't have a lot of resistance to it, so it's going to be hard to mimic this. I'm actually going to, going to do um, a, a little piece at the end that, that mimics this better, but I'll, I'll talk through it right now. This idea of holding the pressure in there for alveolar recruitment and oxygenation. Flow goes in, pressure's met, flow goes to zero. Now, if this lung had a lot of resistance to it or we had some small airways, just natural resistance there at the end, this would hit zero sooner. But flow goes in, pressure's met, flow drops to zero, but the patient can't exhale until this eye time is over. So in pressure control, again, eye time doesn't control flow, but it does control the hold. 
So if I were to lengthen I time, it, you can see it's a lot longer. And actually it, the flow did go to zero. This short little time in here is pressure hold. So it now becomes that I time is an oxygenation and alveolar recruitment strategy. It essentially holds the pressure in there longer to help pressurize the lungs and oxygenate. So now we have an extra tool in our oxygenation tool belt. We've got FiO2, we have PEEP, and in pressure control, we also have I time. Just to mention too, uh, I talk about this in my pressure support video in more depth. I'll just mention it here. Uh, if you notice how this is kind of laid down, uh, it's, a, it's a slow acceleration. This button right here is flow acceleration. So if we roll that up, it will actually reach the peak faster. Watch this form, waveform is going to stand up a little more. It does create a little spike, which is not desirable uh, because that little spike is going to make it meet pressure sooner. So this is a little much, but if your patient is a little air hungry, you can increase that value and, um, and, and make them more comfortable. Uh, when would you want to use a lower value? Well, if they have a lot of airway resistance, you might use a lower value so that the, it's a more gentle flow on the lungs and doesn't create as much pressure. Okay, so I'll talk about a couple of other things uh, at the end uh, in terms of that pressure hold. Um, and when eye time is set too short, uh, that'll come up shortly here. I wanna talk about these keys really quickly. Um, I talked about this in uh, my volume, con no, my uh, by level video, but I'll mention it here too. These keys are available on a lot of the modes here. And basically these keys control what you want held constant with changes in set rate. In this case, we're going we're gonna to hold I time constant. So if you look, we have uh, this nice little graph down here. It gives me I time, E time, cycle time, and IE ratio. Right now, if rate changes, I'm gonna hold I time constant. So let's change rate. So now if I change rate, if I increase the rate, cycle time's gonna shorten, and uh, it's gonna take it out of E time, not I time, because I'm holding that constant. There we go. So I'm rolling the rate up, and you can see I time is constant but it shortens E time and changes my IE ratio. Okay. Let's go to the third key. Now I'm holding E time constant, and if I change rate, this will stay the same, but I time will change. And my IE ratio, obviously. Okay, if I hit the middle key, then it's gonna hold IE ratio constant and it's gonna change I and E time to hold the same IE ratio. See the IE ratio is staying at one to three no matter what I put the rate at. And that's the keys. Okay. All right, so next I'll go over some of the details using a different kind of graph.